It's February 7th, 2000, a cold Monday morning. Across the world, people sip their coffee, fire up their computers, and log on to the internet. They're ready to search on Yahoo, shop on Amazon, or catch the news on CNN. But something's off. Yahoo won't load. Neither will eBay, Dell, or E-Trade. Screens freeze, phones ring off the hook, and panic ripples through offices and homes. Businesses can't function. Stock prices just beginning to tumble. The internet, still a young, wild place, is crashing. And behind it all, a 15-year-old kid in Montreal, sitting in his bedroom, smirking at his glowing computer screen. His name was Michael Kaus, but online he was Mafia Boy. He wasn't your typical high schooler. While his friends obsessed over video games or crushes, Michael was hooked on something bigger. Hacking. And he was so serious about it that he joined a crew called TNT, a group of young tech rebels who loved pushing boundaries. Together, they built a weapon, a digital tool called Revolta, which means rebellion in Italian. It was perfect for launching denial-of-service attacks, a kind of attack that floods a website with so much fake traffic that it's like a mob blocking a store's entrance. No one gets in, and the whole thing collapses. But between all this, Michael's intentions were uncanny. He didn't want money. He wasn't trying to steal secrets. He just wanted to prove he could do it, to flex his skills and earn bragging rights in the hacker world. So, he aimed Revolta at Yahoo, the internet's biggest search engine back then. And with a few clicks, he unleashed chaos. Mafia Boy had spent weeks building a botnet, infecting vulnerable computers with malware to create his army. From his bedroom, he issued commands, directing thousands of bots to bombard Yahoo's servers with fake requests. To avoid detection, he used spoofed IP addresses, making the traffic seem legitimate. And when Yahoo's systems tried to filter out the attack, he tweaked the botnet's behavior, changing the type and timing of requests to slip through. It was a relentless assault, and eventually Yahoo couldn't handle it and went down for nearly an hour. The news exploded, and Michael's pulse raced. I did that, his mind buzzing with thrill. But then other hackers egged him on, taunting him in chat rooms. Bet you can't hit more. Challenge accepted, he said. He turned Revolta loose on Amazon, eBay, CNN, and more. Even taking a swing at the internet's root name servers, the hidden gears that keep the web running. The damage was insane. Businesses lost millions. In fact, Matthew Kovar, a senior analyst at the market research Yankee Group, stated that the attack caused $1.2 billion in global economic damages and called this event the Digital 9-11. Michael, still just a teen, had no idea the level of damage he had done. He was in over his head, but the grown-ups weren't amused. The FBI and Canada's RCMP kicked off a massive manhunt. This wasn't just some prank. President Bill Clinton and Attorney General Janet Reno went on TV, vowing to catch the culprit. For weeks, agents kept tracing IP addresses, tapping phone lines, piecing together clues, and Michael kept hacking, dodging detection like a ghost. But he wasn't invisible forever. The feds tracked him through his internet provider, then set up surveillance. And just like that, his game was over. April 2000. The doorbell rings. Michael, maybe playing a game or chatting online, casually opens the door to stern-faced cops. Michael Kelsey, one asks. He nods, his stomach dropping. You're under arrest for computer crimes. His mom's voice cracks from the kitchen. Michael, what's happening? But he's already being led away, handcuffs cold on his wrists. The game's up. In court, the evidence buries him. 56 charges of mischief stick after he pleads guilty. But he's 15, so Canada's youth laws go easy. Eight months in juvenile detention, a year of probation, barely any internet access, 
and a $250 fine. Michael's stunt changed everything, literally. Before 2000, companies treated the internet like an invincible toy. Mafia Boy proved it could break. Businesses poured money into defenses, scrambling to plug holes. The U.S. government launched a cybersecurity task force. A former CIA agent, Craig Gwent, later said Michael's attacks sparked a decade of tougher internet security. One kid's rebellion forced the world to grow up fast. But here's the unexpected climax. This story isn't just about Michael getting detained and the internet becoming a safer place. There's more to this. Today, Michael runs a cybersecurity firm, shielding companies from attacks like his own. In his book, Mafia Boy, how I cracked the internet and why it's still broken, he looks back, a cocky teen who learned the hard way. He warns that the internet's stronger now, but not bulletproof. Curiosity and guts can still bring it down. So, how do we shield ourselves from the next Mafia Boy in 2025? Companies must deploy advanced DDoS protection, like cloud-based traffic filtering and load balancers, to absorb and redirect attack surges. Regular security audits and penetration testing can uncover vulnerabilities before hackers strike. Partner with content delivery networks like Cloudflare to distribute traffic and keep sites online. Individuals should use strong, unique passwords, enable two-factor authentication, and keep software updated to avoid becoming botnet pawns. Everyone needs training to spot phishing emails that spread malware. Back up critical data regularly to recover fast if hit. These modern defenses raise the bar, making attacks harder for today's hackers. No system is foolproof, but a proactive, layered approach is your best shield. Because maybe the next Mafia boy's out there, somewhere getting ready, waiting for the perfect moment. The question is, are we ready? <laughs>